known as Ingrid Engin, comes into the team that includes two WSL players in Reading's Amelie Eichlin and Chelsea's Guro Wrighton, who we just saw there, who wins her 75th cap. It's the squad's top scorer in the absence of important players, Hegerberg, Hansen, and captain Mielder. And both sets of players take the knee before kickoff in the southeast of Spain. And away we go as Norway face England again this year. And the Norwegians will be hoping for a better first half for starters than they experienced in Brighton and already they're looking to cause England problems. But England, as they have done against so much opposition, Lucy, dealing with problems. Yeah, they've had such a successful 2022. And I think that they'll want to continue that and see out the year. And Norway were hurt by that, the 8-0 loss against England in the Euros really hurt and obviously things have changed the team plays a little bit differently but this is a test certainly for England it's like they've had so many different tests over the last year under Serena Wiegmann and Japan were the latest on Friday and they dealt with that one they're positioning themselves as one of the foremost fancied sides um, the tournament in Australia and New Zealand next year this game, a chance to see the depth that England have, and a chance to see Mayor Letizia who's on the ball now for England. We've even talked about it prior to this game, and the Japan game, that these young players have got an opportunity, and it's good that they play in this level of opposition, because a chance to make your mark. And the likes of Mayor Letizia, it's a perfect opportunity for her. I, I like the look of her, physically very good, very confident young player as well. Made a move from Brighton as well to a arguably bigger club, doing well. It might be caught out here. Brighton winning the ball and sliding it through to Horve, who's got a bit of time and tried to catch out Roebuck at the near post. And then recovered just about enough to make it difficult for the experienced Horve. It's easy to get through a couple of times. It, England quite high, obviously, just lost that challenge there. But this is what we're talking about with Letizia. And she can physically get back. She's got the pace, timing perfect there, just enough to just lean into the player. We want to experience members of the young side as Norway take this corner towards the back post. It's a bit awkward here for England. Many Bright in the way, then thumps it away. We've seen that before. different Norwegian side to the one that faced England at the Euros on the south coast. The Norway squad missing some of its big figures. Liam Hansen taking time out for the Norway team due to a heart issue. Under Hegerberg injured. Captain Karen Yoda injured for Hegerisa. Didn't really want to be drawn on those absent players. Why would any coach? These are the players that she has to pick from for now. Yeah, she certainly set a team up a lot different to how Norway were set up in the Euros. You see their defensive shape, 5-4-1, when they haven't got it and they're just trying to close the spaces because they know that England can pass and play through the thirds. I'm just trying to try and make it difficult for them to close those passing lanes off. I say, Lucy, very different to how Norway set up against England last time out. Pass through them with ease. No Ellen White, of course, tonight. No Beth Mead to pull out of the squad for personal reasons. Greenwood keeping that ball towards Nikita Paris. And the offside flag is up. This is an England side with Paris out on the right and Lauren James in the 10 roll she so craves. Yeah, interested to see Nikita Paris because trying to revitalize her career. Manchester United obviously didn't fit into what Edeval was doing at, at Arsenal. But this is an opportunity for her, I think, to, to show that she's still a full part of this England squad going into the World Cup next year. Experienced head in the team as well. Made up by Daly. On the side who have proved a conundrum. For most of the sides they faced, we talk about England facing a test, but England have been a test for everybody they faced. 
Here's Walsh. Walsh it over the top towards Paris. Charles putting a foot in. Walsh. And do from his left hand side. Which was very effective for Chloe Kelly against Japan. So much of the good work that England did came down that left hand side. His feet from Charles. The Norway can break. So far they've broken pretty well. Really bright in the right place. Stop right. Tune to James. Kelly. James again. He's making so much time on the ball. Bright is that forward. That's asking too much of Daly. And through to the goalkeeper, Mickelson. Yeah, different kind of test for England now. Norway have shown in the opening five minutes or so that they're going to sit deep, they're going to defend, compact, and then they're going to break quickly because they have the players who are effective and can do that, and they've got behind England a couple of times. So it's about England figuring out, probably passing the ball a bit quicker. Norway's in a good position here. Nyklund's in the middle. Okay, they can't get past Greenwood, then right is crossing. We know she can deliver well. Norway completely miscued that. Again, Marston, but they've lost it. An England transition here with Walsh. She releases Kelly. Plenty of has forward here, England. James, Kelly, three waiting for the cross. Inside on that right foot, delivering balls in from that sort of angle. Been very effective for Chloe Kelly, not that tight. No way of getting up the pitch when they do break out of that set defensive shape and really committing players forward and that England have find that quite difficult to deal with. Not really got going England in terms of the passing and the movement in that final third either. They're seeing a lot of the ball so far. Walsh. Kelly. Notable absentee is the noise of Mary Earps in goal. <laughs> Talking your teammates through the game. Here's Greenwood. The best pass from Charles. No way. He looked to break quickly so far. Yeah, no way are interesting because Engen's dropping in between the centre-backs to make a five when Norway haven't got it, and then she's stepping up into midfield when they do have it, so it's quite fluid, quite clever, really. Lauren James has got some defending to do because Engen is a problem when Norway have the ball. Chloe Kelly conceding that free kick. This was that chance, that breakaway. Yeah, they've, they've gone left twice now, haven't they, when they, they've got into good positions of it. That's good. Uh, that's really good early on for Leticia. She's settling into this England team. Just did enough to put Holvey off the shot. Physically very, very strong. Good match, that. The two players who play in Italy. Aroma. This Norway squad. Holvey. Bright. Under pressure. position in field for Norway trying to close down but England might be in here with Paris just couldn't take the touch to get away in the marker England not really turned Norway around yet there's a, an opportunity to just put the ball in behind yes at times they're dropping deep and denying space for that run but what you want to do early on in a game and get the defenders facing their own goal make it uncomfortable for them side of defence for Norway. And yet Sinstevold, who played in midfield against France, can play at full back as well. It's a left back tonight. Is our referee, Susanna Valentova, who officiated the game against Japan as well. Sophie Romanhal leading the line for Norway tonight. 
Magno Hegerberg. Choose to fill. A decent scoring record, though. Here's Paris. Pick up with two. Manchester United teammate, Paris again. Letizia, another of the Manchester United contingent. Their new signings. Greenwood. Trying to find Lauren James, who unbelievably didn't get that under control. There's a general tempo to the game against Japan, which suggested it was a late year friendly. It's got a similar start to it. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at Norway, and you can tell they're trying to, to, to be different, you know, that they all know the roles, they know what they do, the, the timing of jumping to press is, is good so far. They've obviously gone through a, a rigid preparation in terms of defensive work into those transitions into attack. It's about dealing with what England have to throw at them in that final third. and this is a quite different England team. Consistent side that Serena Wiegmann picked during the Euros. Closest we'll get really to her experimenting, I guess. If it works, you wouldn't change it, would you? But I, I know she wants to, to look at these younger players. And like I say, to, when you've got the England shirt on, you have to take that opportunity. Rachel Daly up front. All I've ever known her is, is a striker. And obviously, in recent times, she's playing that defence. but. Scores goals. It's carried well by two. And England on the corner, they're going to get it. And they do inject that pace into their play, England. They do look mightily impressive. Yeah, it's those runs in behind, whether it's a dribble in behind. We've got the wide players to do that. The likes of Chloe Kelly, or whether it's a run from a two or a, a Lauren James. Quite pulled that one off. Well, a two. So corner to England. Looking to test to the Norway keeper for the first time. Greenwood so good with the set pieces for England normally. Not with that one though. To see it. Side to Walsh. Side. They want to control the game, control the tempo of the game, play it on their terms. Yeah, almost a lull, and then it, there has to be that burst, there has to be the running behind. But they're quite patient. You know, they're quite patient to, to build up possession. But when they look forward, they have to see movement in front because of the way that Norway are set up. It's Greenwood looking for Kelly. And dropping in there. Defence, but look at the feet from James. Letizia, two. Yes! On the same wavelength there, so between Walsh and James. Can Norway break quickly here? Involved. In a way, might be older. to do the same. Really got into that attacking rhythm yet, but again, seeing from Lauren James, she's practically press resistant. She receives the ball and that first touch into whatever space she's scanned and seen. It's clever. Sophia Monhal disagreed with that decision. Free kick for Greenwood. Yeah, Greenwood's really growing into that left sided centre back. She's doing that for, for club, but. The delivery and the angle of the delivery that she comes from in that left centre back position just opens up for for England. So we haven't got Williamson in there. England missing a fair few players actually, but they have this depth, this growing depth. Right, plays it forward. Kelly tried to help it on, and that was awkward, very awkward for Norway. Daly putting the pressure on. It's a mix up between Engin and the goalkeeper. Yeah, I'm not so sure that Mickelson really wanted that ball playing back. But Rachel Daly's not going to give that up. It has to be good from the goalkeeper. Difficult for Daly then, but closing down, it's a good job. So 
part of the pitch for Norway where they're lacking experience. <laughs> Winning that ball in the air. That's done for so much time in the England shirt. In the Euros, it was Guru Pedersen goal for Norway. Greenwood to Charles. Kelly. That pressure, the cover from Bergsland. A large proportion of this Norway squad plays in Norway. As we know, we have a significant WSL contingent as well, seven in the squad. Including the missing Mielda. It's clean. Charles, it's Walsh, Kelly, said it before about England's style of play, they're a side who have worn a lot of teams down as well late on, even if they don't get you in the first half, they get you in the second, although the last time they played Norway was the other way around. Yeah, they, they, they're happy to to break but they're quite comfortable building up they're quite comfortable being patient and I think that's something that Serena Viva has put into the team you know, it doesn't really matter when you score you score late but make sure you keep doing what she wants them to do passing it moving the opposition about difficult one like I said tonight you can see the Norway shirts 5-4-1 they have to move it quicker and it's, it's the runs that have to be quicker than the passing from Letizia it's awkward Older dealt with it at the back post. Back trying to bring it away for Norway. Try to keep them pinned in, force a mistake. Engen. Cover from Neve Charles. Yeah, we're talking about the prior to the game. We're in this opportunity for Neve Charles. All the, all the attributes to be a fantastic full back, whether that's right or left. England looking at not really got that left side and left footer in there, so a good opportunity for her again. Here's Bright. It goes to Paris. Patiently looking for that opening. Bright switching the play. Kelly in the corner. I've said that before. Kelly. Plays it in, was she caught there? She played that ball in either way. Always see it out at the end. Yeah, Kelly okay, holding the width on that left hand side and always prepared to front up a defender, but I do think that they've defended well against her so far. Double up if they need to. Many complaints from Norway for that challenge from Neve Charles. In the end, Carlson skewed that one. Daly to Letizia looking to link up with Paris and she'll get it back. May Letizia. Paris. We have England contained in that corner. Paris almost wriggled out of trouble. Well, she doesn't look out of place. Yeah, Letizia, she's slotted into that right back as if she's Lucy Bronze, and that's some credit to her. She looks confident. Willing to back up Nikita Paris on that right hand side. Not back on that side for England. Three waiting for the cross. James is one of them. And that hit the arm of James. Call it that way and put over by Paris. Yeah, they set up well Norway, but when the England do put the ball into the box, there's a little bit of indecision whether it's a goalkeeper or the defenders in front of goal. Maybe that was handball, but England didn't really make anything of it. Well, Laura James, a special year for her getting first caps for England. The first start was against the Czech Republic, second start tonight. 2023 is going to be an even bigger year for Lauren James. 
he's certainly the most talented England player I've seen probably since, naturally talented since Kelly Smith, and that's some going. She has a lot to live up to, but I think she has that in there. Potential, obviously. And Hayes has seen it at Chelsea. It's just about finding the pockets now because there's not much room up there. Here's Bright. Harris, can she get away here? Not quite. Almost stolen behind. That's good defending by Harvey Kinn back there. Keita Paris. Up and down three years for her since returning to England. Harvikin pops that long. England can come forward again. Already starting to dominate possession. Daly. Hold up play in the end. Toon spotted the run. James. A little bit tight in the end. Toon. It's the play in Paris. Right in her path. A bit more threatening, and that's a statement challenge for Leticia. Yeah, just committing bodies forward to the press. England always stopped playing out from the goalkeeper and passing it long just because England get right up in the faces and they're prepared to press high. Just for those who don't know, Leticia is no relation to Matt Leticia. That's a loose pass from Leticia. And Norway. Have got numbers to the right and left, but the pass in the end for Michaelin wasn't the best. But one back by Horve. Could she pick the right pass? Oh, and right just past the post. Big chance for the Norwegians. Yeah, England a little bit loose with the ball. That gives Norway an opportunity down that left-hand side. Just need to take a little bit more care. Just a little bit overconfidence there. From Leticia, they have to finish that though, right? And probably not on her most favoured foot. She's causing problems, Holby. When she gets in those attacking positions, she picks out the right ball and like a more simple chance. Right and made it look maybe left footed, uh, been in the back of the net. They have served a few early warnings for the England defence. It's been pretty tight under Serena Veeman. Yeah, you can understand having shipped eight against. England in the Euros that the focus first is on defensive solidity then I've been really impressed with the way they've broken out from that it's a question that England need to answer in terms of how they break it down but if you move the ball slowly or you keep moving the ball slowly it's very very easy to shuffle across as a as an opposition James just dropping off the front is bright Leticia to Toon, trying to link up with Paris again. There's a lot of creativity in this England team tonight with Toon and James. It's about getting them on the ball, said, but there's a lot of players in front of the ball for England, which actually can make play a lot more predictable for Norway. This one enables them to break quickly. Engen. Just between the two players at the end. Threaten just enough though. Yeah, Engen did. Usually to see, but a little bit dodgy on losses of, of possession. And all players need to make sure that they recover. And just get into spaces if they can't affect the ball. It's been too easy for Norway to get through. Right from Norway again. Engen. They are finding gaps in this England defence, but Larson put under enough pressure there. England's recovery has been a key factor in their defence as well. If they are caught out, they've recovered pretty well to snuff out the danger. Well, Kira Walsh is the, is the main one. I know what she does in, in possession, her passive range, her choice of passing, but the lines of recovery are unbelievably good, and it's not until you really just individually watch her you see that. But really just expose her, you have to come back and help. 
course, we'll be keeping a close eye on Rachel Daly's role leading the line for England tonight. As we look for who will be the permanent fixture to replace Ellen White in that role. Quite a selfless role at times. Yeah, I think it's something when you try to replace Ellen White that you fully appreciate what she was all about. Russell's been absolutely incredible, but that spot is up for grabs, and it's interesting that Serena Wiegmann has given Rachel Daly an opportunity there. She has the stats to prove playing in the States that she scores goals and obviously over here as well. Right, clipping it forward towards Paris, who's eased off the ball again by Harviken. But in the previous friendlies to this particular camp against the USA and Czech Republic, it was Lauren Hemp who was uh, number nine, scored against the USA. England held by the Czech Republic to a goalless draw. Do not doubt anything that Serena Wiegmann has done as England manager so far. So the record proves in major tournaments that she knows exactly the decisions to make. She keeps the pressure off the teams that she's in charge of, so they stay in the little bubble and don't particularly feel that pressure. She's consistent in selection, and if things are not going right, she makes changes very, very quickly, and that's exactly what you want in a manager in a tournament. The pressure from Bright almost forced a turnover. Ali Roebuck, the tenth cap tonight, yet to start a competitive game for England. She has for Great Britain the Olympics last year. Greenwood. Charles, the Chelsea teammate Lauren James. Greenwood. This layoff from Daly. Kelly across. Toon. Now Paris, Letizia almost sold a bit short there. Ends up seeding the free kick in the end. England made a little bit of a mess of that one. It's the first time really Rachel Daly's been that focal point and, and linked up play and it just opened up for England and it's just a straight pass really from Nikita Paris that the move broke down but that was better from England. And that's where Rachel Daly needs to find it. She's not going to go beyond because there's not much space and she has to find those pockets to to link up players, and then she has to have runners beyond. Norway's been busy on that left-hand side for Norway. Now this is a tester for Roebuck, quick up her line. Two. Nice control to Paris. <laughs> Millie Bright, no, is the usual captain. Right to the back, captain material herself, and with the armband, for these games in Williamson's absence. Yeah, he had a wonderful tournament in the summer. Really growing in that role, centre back, strong, stiff in the box, can pass out, works well with Williamson and Greenwood there. Was trying to play that ball through to Toon, now has some defending to do. You see what I mean by losses, Seb, that, you know, that first pass out is an easy pass for, for Norway and you need to work hard at the front four to just affect, try and stop that first pass in. It's good pressure from England. Daly, beautiful feet from Walsh. Couldn't quite slip the pass through. Worked her way out of a tight situation there. The sort of style we're used to seeing with Owekira Walsh. Is Engen. Then Hogg trying to turn the ball back inside. So it comes to nothing in the end. They are trying to break quickly though, Norway. Not wasting any time. It's a decent scoring record for her country. Sophia Roman Hall. Norway's in 11 perhaps, so far. Right. Greenwood. Half an hour played. We haven't actually created too many chances. Probably Norway have had the better opportunities so far. England most of the ball. Kelly switching sides and playing one in. Teaser. The elder. It's quite a 
from Kelly. An early ball in. So the body's in there. James. Charles. Carrying the ball. James. Urge to shoot. Beautiful score from James. Yeah, we talked about Lauren James. Her capability on the ball, close control. She's able to just create that bit of space from nothing. And usually she's got an absolute hammer of a, a left foot or right foot, but it's particularly easy for Mickelson. But that's better, that's what she's all about. Just missed it on the replay there, but that bit of skill to find the space. Mickelson dealt with that one. James again. Gets that ball under control. Wins the free kick. Let's try to get tight with England players at all opportunities. It's a terrific play. As soon as England have a bit of urgency and up the tempo and the intensity of their attack, then they start to look dangerous. Too, too many lulls and to pick the moments to switch it up. Two. Like England are one pass away at the moment. Composure from Nelson, but she gives it away. Horve. To right. Back to Horve. That was forward here. Eichland is one of them. Miss Cuda shot. Slip though from England and pushed over by Nelson. Horve. He's really choosing a moment down that left-hand side to just attack the space that England leave. And she's quick. She moves really, really well with the ball, and some of the ball into the box, of course, real issues for England. An international level, it's a bit inexperience in the fullback areas for England tonight. Debut from Letitia, after third cap, for Eve Charles. Kelly. To two. <laughs> Kelly spots the run of Paris as well as Daly. That's why you put her up front. Great ball in. Great header. England leads. And that's the thing about Rachel Daly. Absolutely relentless. She's not had a, a sniff really tonight in terms of chances on goal, but she will keep going. She'll keep making those runs, and that's a really, really, really clever ball into her. One thing she can do since the age of 12. I saw her at Leeds when I played in the senior team. She was a little centre forward who wanted to score goals. What a great ball that is. Just in behind the defence. She's still got a lot of work to do there, Daly, but disguised it well enough. And that's the thing, you put Rachel Daly in front of goal and she can finish. And she's going to cause a selection headache, I think, for Wiegmann. Scored against Japan. Scores against Norway. And Chloe Kelly proving a provider again for England. Absolutely no chance for the goalkeeper. And Rachel Daly, always one of the most popular scorers in this England squad. 11th goal for her nation. And England who were patient work, creating too much, but felt they were threatening to cause that Norway defensive problem. Yeah, I mean, it, you talk about, you know, getting the right ball into the box. And yes, Norway defend very, very well in a structured shape, but a good ball and a good run you just break that defensive structure apart, as just seen by Daly. But she's got a goal against Japan when she's further up the pitch, and she's very, very effective in those areas. Just such an asset for club and country. It's Carla Ward who said that you have to find a place for Rachel Bailey on the pitch somehow. Walsh. She had Kelly and Paris switching wings. Kelly, an England side that you feel plays with a swagger when they're on top. Kelly playing another teasing delivery. Yeah, the goal came from that inside channel delivery from 
Chloe Kelly, but easily will go wide. But that's a, it's a clever angle where the goal came from. Difficult to defend against as it comes in. It's an awkward one there for Mjolder to pull back on that side. Maybe free blew her whistle there out of sympathy. At first cast, it seemed to be too much wrong for Paris. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I think it was just a just off balance, wasn't she? Yelled at just a shoulder barge. For Hergerisa, there's three games in charge of England. One was a 6-0 win over Northern Ireland. And then two defeats to France and Canada. Two comfortable defeats, has to be said at the time, but how things have changed since then. And have faced all comers except for the French. That happened at the World Cup. James. Two. towards Kelly, Bailey again, no. right it goes, England looking more and more threatening as this half goes on. Yeah, better combinations, I think, again from, shows a goal on that inside channel, that's what I was talking about, when that sort of, you've got to get the pass absolutely spot on, and she certainly did that, Kelly only needs one chance. Real credit for a play. You think oh, she's had to chop and change her positions. And Serena Wiegmann, left back, right back, up front. Could play wide in that front three as well. Favourite has to be centre forward. It's a difficult thing in the game to do. Right, he'll tell you that as a number nine. No feeling like it though. Great finisher. Paris. She'll look for Daly as well. She's in there again. Awkward header. She thought she was having a shirt pulled as well. She did well there. Nikita Paris out on that left-hand side, cut inside on a on a right foot. But I think Chloe Kelly had just made that central run, but it just needed a a running behind just to anticipate if it Mitchell Daly couldn't make anything of it. That area is there for the other wide forward to to come in and hammer it home. As though Harvick can had it. Full of her shirt. VAR, no goal line technology for these particular fixtures. One game that England had outside the Euros with VAR, friendly against the United States. Here's James. To surge away from Engen. And James, nice found a teammate with that pullback. Chambers at Reading. Can't get out. She did a few times about the depth that England have in this side. You can already see it in this team. Two. Running towards Kelly. To say can't stretch for that. England uh, missing Lucy Bronze, missing Lauren Hemp. Kirby. Yeah, but you're absolutely right. I think I kind of talking about it before about the England looking to the World Cup as, if not the favourite, definitely one of the favourites for the World Cup. And a lot to do with the talent in the first 11, but also the, the depth of the squad and surely galvanised by the performances in this season. Winning the Euros brings a different sort of pressure, but definitely a confidence, confident squad. Linking up well here, England. No pass again. The emotions of Ella Toon. It's like it doesn't go her way. Not that far away with that pass. Yeah, they just seem to be clicking a few relationships on the pitch now. Ball into Daly and then um, two touch that's very difficult to defend against, even if you are set. 
feels like everybody enjoys playing for England as well. Yeah, that's the key thing. I think Vigman has the, all the girls who play running about like it's the first cap, and that takes some doing in terms of managing people, and I think that's what she does really well. Right, unfortunate with that free kick. It's a wry smile. Talk about all the chopping and changing perhaps in these friendlies, but really bright, a firm fixture for Serena Wiegmann. But have to keep repeating that she went through the entire European Championships with the same starting 11. Consistency that paid dividends. On Vates pushing that ball across. Ankelin. Even with her. their moments in this first half, Norway. They're certainly a stronger performance in their first half the last time they faced England. But it's not just that 8-0 defeat at the Euros where they've had a problem against England. I think three of the last four non-Olympic tournaments, Norway have been knocked out by England. 2015, 2019 World Cups. Maybe defeat really meant they had a long uphill task to get out of the group. James. Yeah, to remember now we're missing Hegerberg, missing Karen Graham Hansen, who two of the best players in European at world football. It's a sort of a restart, isn't it, for, for, for Norway, I think, under reset. She certainly is concentrating on building from the back first, but trying to use the attacking talents that she does have on display. Walsh. Remember it being said when England faced Norway in 2015 and 2019, that if you could stop Lucy Bronze, you could stop England. They've come a long way since then. They've got threats all over the pitch, this England side. Lucy Bronze did score in those games against Norway, so they didn't do a good job in that regard. Yeah, I mean, Lucy Bronze has been a key figure with dragging England up to this level. She always had that mindset, that winning mentality, playing in the States, similar to the one Rachel Daly had. I think now England is getting to the level of the USA, obviously beat them, no longer fear them. That's about the development of, of football in England for women, and it's been incredible. WSL, the professional, the pathways of England level is just the technical and tactical acumen of these players, a real high level now. It's a build up play though by Norway. Norway to Engin. The bench player for Barcelona. Consider their midfield. Which includes currently Kira Walsh. It's mad that Engen doesn't play that much at Barcelona. What a player she is. So t tonight, when she's looking after Lauren James, and Lauren James just needs to be aware when England do lose possession just to stay with it. She's a little bit tighter to her. It's the last part of the first half. So a lot more in time with Mateus out injured. Toon inside to Walsh. Walsh out to Kelly. Kelly will whip one in. But they do carry some venom, those crosses. England there for Norway again. Daly's goal, the difference between the sides as we close in on half time. Interesting to see the changes that Serena Wiegmann makes this game Spoken beforehand about the options up front we see ebony salmon in the middle for england in the second half Norway try to push for an equalizer in the corner late in this first half and it goes never thought about how to claim it didn't Billy Bright. And 
that's dealt with defence. Looks found across there, centre back. Expect too much added time in this first half. Bright. Sit forward. Charles keeping it alive. Fighting to win that ball back. But too hard, and that's the final action of the first half in which England dominated possession. Norway had some dangerous attacks, but in the end, it's the goal from Rachel Daly that separates the sides, leading the line. Rachel Daly and got on the end of Chloe Kelly's ball. Half time, it's England one, Norway nil. Five of Norway apart, a little bit more the opportunities there, and it's the last game and the last opportunity for this year for the players. Yeah. Well, the last time that England played Norway, as we've been referencing at the Euros, at half time the score was 6 0. The eventual score was 8 0. So it's a very different game at the moment. 1 0 at half time, so a little bit better from Norway in this one, of course. They don't want to get humiliated again. But can they provide something in the second half? Can they get something out of this game against the Lionesses? Or will the Lionesses remain unbeaten in 2022? Let's hand you back to your commentary team. For the second half, Lucy Ward is alongside Seth Hutchinson. Thank you, Laura. Triple change for England at half-time. Manchester City's Esme Morgan will come on for her third cap. Having started the game against Japan on Friday. And she'll replace the captain, Millie Bright. Looks like Georgia Stanway's going to put the armband on as she comes on into midfield. And Katie Zellerman, and it's Lauren James and Kira Walsh to make way. So, Serena... Seen enough from James Walsh and Bright. I think she knows those three pretty well so far. And Katie Zellum, who's been in most of the squads bar the Euros one in the end. Coming on and Georgia Stanway, such a firm fixture of that England midfield under Serena Wiegmann. And Julie Backstad coming on for Norway. Other than Manchester City players in this match. Must operate down the left-hand side. Anywhere down the left-hand side, in all honesty. There is Stanway with the One Love armband on. Rachel Daly will start this second half up front still. No change in that regard. England 1-0 up. And Serena Wiegmann making those changes. Lucy, what's she going to get from the players coming on? Yeah, I would, I would suspect that Zellum will be like for like. Getting in there instead of Kira Walsh. Obviously, like you say, she knows what she gets from Bright and Walsh. Here's Kelly, playing another one of those dangerous balls in, cutting inside on her right foot, into the arms of the goalkeeper. I would think that she wants a, a higher intensity from her team, particularly in the higher areas of the pitch, England. They did start to combine in those sort of forward areas, but just not enough of it. Maybe a little fatigue at the end of the year, but it's so important that they finish off this year with a win. Mentioned in the first half that Norway have lost to England in three of the last four tournaments. But they did beat England in friendly matches in between those competitions. And they might have an opportunity here at the start of the second half. Eichland cuts inside, it looks to Ben one, but Roback had that covered. Yeah, when Norway do get the ball in those sort of positions, then they do move it fast. And a few times now, they've got themselves in front of goal, but you know, the final effort, the final pass has not been the best. The player going stiffly close there for Norway. They've had more opportunities or more shots on goal than England. First half. Nelson to field it. Losing out to Kelly. Kelly giving that ball away. Michael. Daly 
applying the press. A little bit more intensity on the press from England when Norway have the ball in their own half. A bit of a step up from what we saw in the first half. Serena Beekman demands on this England side when they've lost the ball. Right. Trying to work that ball out to their left hand side. It's seeing a lot. Winston Bolt. Well, had some good moments in the first half, but then one or two moments where probably a little bit overconfident and just safety first and a couple positionally, but I think she'll be happy with her first half performance, that's for sure. Let us see 20 year old this England lineup. This is Esme Morgan as well. Seb. She's with a lot of potential, great stature, physically a lot stronger now as she's sort of got a bit older and I think that technically good with the ball at her feet and she's been injured and this is terrific for her to be getting minutes. Indecision back there for Norway on the cover and that's Rachel Daly. I think you can tell the way that Daly's reacting in the second half that they have a minor rocket from Serena at half-time in terms of the tempo and the energy out of possession. Well, she's quick and relentless in her defending. Right, in Stanway off the ball. Greenwood. Trying to pass out, ends up giving it away. Pull out to Blackstone. That's a bit of a blind pass. Here's two. Kelly. It's these sort of positions, Chloe Kelly. It's away from Bielda. Kelly again hangs that one into the penalty area towards Daly. She'll drop behind for a goal kick. Yeah, Chloe Kelly's been the bright spark, whether it's on the right flank or start the second half on this left flank. Slow the defender down and then just pass the ball past her. And she's got such good delivery on the run. She mentioned Blackstead coming on. It's Corvey who's gone off. She caused England a few issues in that first half. Again, bursting forward. Nelson. Michael. This should be easy for Roba. She seems to be Serena Vigna's number two at the moment. To Mary Earps, who over the course of 18 months is very much England's number one. For a long time, Robert was in front of Earps, but I think she's proven herself to be. The number one, full of confidence and hands in front of that back four. Kelly, back to Charles. Zellum. A few Manchester United players out there at the moment. Katie Zellum coming on. Zellum again. Find the pass, and Charles can see the free kick. Had to do something there, Neve Charles, otherwise England might have been caught out. Yeah, the backs obviously play high, but in those situations where there's a turnover of possession, then you have to make a decision in moments like that. Blackstone. Stand up, stand up. Outside, outside. Oh, Blackstone again. Boosman that had been travelling contingent that they didn't go her way. Marisa facing Martin Hergren. Yeah. Disappointing European Championships for Norway. Greenwood. Yeah. 
that one tournament that England didn't knock out Norway, 2017 Euros. What happened to the group? A disappointing tournament on that occasion. Would you run the major tournament, the Norwegians? They're in New Zealand's group for the World Cup. Greenwood forward towards Paris. This is going to run to Letizia. First time ball in, and not a bad one, but here's the goalkeeper again, Carson. She was just a beat behind to play there, Rachel Daly. It's a great touch that was from Blackstad. I'll tell you what, if she meant that fair play, oh, she's just giving it away. Yeah, given away by Norway and Blackstad. England in a good position here, Kelly. Has that to run across, then tried to push that in first time. It's good to be there. From Kelly as it ran across, it probably had a bit of pace on it, the ball, and she already had in mind, I think, as she'd made that move that she was going to shoot, but the ball had drifted wide enough for the ball to just go back into the box where Daly was. The last three goals have all been scored for England rather than her club. Letizia. Roebuck. Such a confident side, England. Can cause you a problem every now and again where you set a pass short. Had enough cover there. Should be a free kick, perhaps. Well, Greenwood saves the day because Roman Howe was almost in there to equalise. Just a little bit of lack of of concentration there in terms of making the passes count out of defence. Remember, it's 1-0, you're always taking a chance. Greenwood initially gets caught on the ball. And Zellum again just takes a second too long. Managed to avoid finding the ball in the back of the net, though, England. It's a corner for England to defend. What can Norway do here? Not the best corner, but it might still work out for them. Paris away. My daily back there. Nelson. From Toon. Nelson. Blackstead. Good feet. That should be a free kick. In a good position here for Norway. Rash decisions in that defensive third. I think the, the substitutes come on. It always takes a while for the team to settle again as an 11. Not quite done that. Backstead, a player of real promise and talent. Picked up on Manchester City. It can be a strong left side for Norway in an attacking sense. But a good position here. We know Guru Wrighton likes to strike a striker free kick. Has scored them in the WSL. She's standing over this one. The Norway captain tonight. That is there as well. But you'd fancy it will be Wrighton. And it is Wrighton. And Robuck delves with it. Congratulated by a defence. Solid from Robuck there. She anticipated where Wrighton was going to put it, but she still had to save it because it's not bad. Full stretch. She actually made it look really comfortable, Roebuck. Going for that top corner, Gura Wrighton. Goes the Norway corner. Their best spell of the match, you might say. Can they make it count? Will England break? Paris. Can she get away? Needs some support here, Nikita Paris. Stanway forward. Numbers arriving. Letizia goes back. England will start again. Greenwood. Toon. On to Charles. And Charles with a low ball across. Back in there again. Help Norway 
repel England again. Kelly. Morgan. The club teammate alongside her in the centre of defence. Alex Greenwood. Greenwood out to Charles. Kelly. Gets that ball out from her feet and plays another. Delicious ball into that penalty area. Thumbs up from Rachel Daly. Yeah, I thought that Rachel Daly was going to throw herself at that. I thought it was in within her, a range of a stretch out, perhaps, of a leg. How good the save was from Roebuck. Girl right, and we know how good her left foot is. On the side for Roebuck. Zengen gives it away though, straight to Charles, back by Kelly. Zellem to Charles. Chloe Kelly. Stanway to Letitia. It's getting back by control again, England, after that spell for Norway. Fullback's height to see on that far side and Charles. Charles down the line to Kelly. Defending in the end from Bergsvan. And they're not letting Norway out. And they've won it back, Charles. Zellum. Went into Stamway. The ball in difficult areas, Georgia Stanway. Letizia. And now we're quite happy for England to have possession in some areas and then to do make a pass into dangerous areas. We'll just surround and try and press. to the side with the lead. No rush to find that gap in the Norway defence. Blackstad back there. So it's a my catching moments in the second half. Georgia Stanway trying to buy some time to tie her shoelaces. Well, here comes a familiar face for fans of Arsenal. Frieda Marnham, who comes on to replace Lisa Nelson in that midfield. And a real force in the midfield for club and country. Charles. Towards Daly, sharp from Daly, Stanway, keeping the move alive. Usually from England we'd see the, the two eights when England have got possession going up and beyond the line, but with Norway defending, dropping and denying space in behind, that space is not always there. So it's about the quick passes in front of the Norway defence and then get one in behind, try and shift them about. And it's not happen too much That's quite compact and very very organized in the defending and you can tell they've approached this game where they really do not want to concede too many goals against England and see if they can nick one on the break Kelly Zellum playing it in towards Stanway Blackstar should be able to clear for Norway sheer number of clean sheets that England have had as well as another thought in their mind. Just when Norway thought they'd been tested enough, England can bring on Alessia Russo. Zellum. Letizia. Just to see who comes off here for England. Greenwood. 
side by Charles. It may be Alex Greenwood who comes off here. Should be interesting. I could see Daly go to right back and Letitia go to centre back. That's a good guess, that Seb. It's knowledge, isn't it? <laughs> On comes Alessia Russo. So let's see if that does see Daly switch back into the defence. Letitia can play at centre back as well. Russo, touch from Charles, gets the better of the older. Charles, good strength as well. Toon, Toon, quick feet. That's not that far away from her teammate or the goal. And she always keeps it cool in those situations. Ella Toon, she doesn't force the shot on the edge of the area. Swings it back round. It's good work by Neve Charles. She's done steady work down that left-hand side. Just drags the ball to her left foot, but it was always curling away. Toon, of course, she feels like a really experienced player in this England squad. And as we remember that she's still one of the young players in the squad. Morgan, just getting the foot in there to clear. There are spaces here for Norway to exploit. It's understandable considering the changes in the England defence. Marnham. They just dropped back in, like you said, Seb. A completely different mindset from... Maybe a little bit more space for her to run into from that right-back position. It's a good position to play where you can see all the pitch players in front of you and you can get yourself forward. Just saw there Letizia getting an earful from Rachel Daly on that side. Zengen. Should be an England free kick, but it's Rachel Daly getting her foot in as well. What a player she is for England. To be able to just slot into right back after scoring in a game up front. Yeah, the timing of the press as well. She There was a big space then in between, but she knew the ball was going to come in to Blackstad and she made a move pretty quickly to go in and defend and be quite aggressive with that duel, but just clipped to the heels of Blackstad. But so you know, that aggressive pressing, just to not allowing the Blackstad to turn and face their goal. Now Paris got there. This should be a booking. Should be the first booking of the game. The key to Paris got there first. And she's got a problem here, Paris, as well, from that challenge. Stivold has hurt herself as well in making the challenge. Can have no complaints about that one. Nikita Paris is getting some treatment after that challenge from yes, since Devolt gives us the opportunity to let you know about the FA Cup replay between Salford City and Peterborough United. ITV4 tomorrow for quarter past seven. A few words in the ear for Ella Toon from Serena Beekman. Those high standards. You get the feeling as it's gone on for Serena Vigman that she really loves the role as well. I think winning a trophy helps. Yeah, absolutely helps. Good to see Paris back on her feet. That's where you want to see her front foot get into the ball first. It had to be brought down there because she'd have been away. So England have a free kick. So the players forward for this one. Zillam, very far, tied by Charles, Russo, oh that's a messy clearance, a break to Stanway, the striker's clearance from Sophia Roman Howe in the end. 
Hutchinson is just trying to get a little flick on as the ball came in quite strong from Stanway. Couldn't get it ra quite round the corner. And a cheap free kick for England to give away there, Esme Morgan. It's stop start in the last few minutes, but as far as England are concerned, it's about managing the game, trying to get that second goal if they can, try and adapt to the substitutes that have been made and still keep a bit of a rhythm. I have to say Morgan disagreed with that decision. Away. Brighton plays that diagonal. Well by Russo. His first thought was to try to break forward there and get on the end of Kelly's clearance. And Carson. Tissier, the heart of that England defence. Look at the likes of Neve Charles and Letizia. They can play in more than one position. He does help you in getting into England squads. balance with left and right footers though it's not just about the way that the player comes out and delivers like we've seen Greenwood with a with a left foot and deliver from that left centre back position but the way you go out and engage opponents with your stronger foot that it does help when you you've got a balance of left and right footers along the back line. Strong play from Marnham. Can't play by Letizia in her penalty area. Russo, good touch to open up the attack for England. Appreciated by the crowd. Harris. Toon. To Russo. Toon. Zellum. On to Charles. Plenty forward here for England. Russo's in there. So is Paris. And drew a save in the end out of. Mikkelsen. Had to generate a lot of power from that cross there, Paris. If it was going to beat Mickelson, it's not a bad ball, but just couldn't get enough on it. And actually, the goalkeeper struggled to deal with it. As it stands, England look on course for another game unbeaten this year. The game in which they've looked like a confident side, a well coached side, a side that has a lot of belief, a lot of promise in there as well. Is Charles Kelly? Kelly again, difficult to pin down on that side, but the other did a good job in the end. Likewise, Engen, brief pass to play because we're in penalty area. De developed into a team that can control play through possession. They can score goals at key times, they can grind teams down, they can win 1 0, or they can absolutely batter teams and just keep adding strings to the boat as they go along, as they develop and get more mature and more experienced, bringing the younger players in as well. It's it's definitely rosy. Stanway up towards Daly. There's another one in this for England. It might be with that skill from Paris. Who's from the crowd because the yellow card is out and that means the red card follows. Stunsevold, two fouls on Paris. Two yellow cards, Norway down to ten. You have to be going some to get a red card in a friendly. She's getting some, such joy down that right hand side, Paris. She's really settled into this game. When you're on a yellow card, it's the absolute last thing you do. Terrific skill from Paris. And you start to pull a shirt and you're on a yellow card, that absolutely no need for that and no complaints either. 
and you wonder if Stinsdevall was going to about to be subbed as well. Let's have a rethink there, Norway. Well, another WSL player in Maria torres Dotter. Chest United, ex-Chelsea player, comes on in defence, centre-back. And another Manchester United player, Ilda Berisa, to the midfield. It's the free kick for England. Player advantage, can they make it count in these closing stages to add more to their lead? In goes the free kick, up went Russo, and following that up was Kelly. She was desperate for the ball to just come down a little bit quicker. She decided what she was going to do, Chloe Kelly. It's a high one, but as it was coming down, that was the header earlier from to Paris again not with really that much power on the ball coming across so she had to create that confirm it's the older who's gone off for Norway and Eichelin I think Norway did want to take off Sunstevold but she took herself off Tissier showing her strength against Guru Wright. Up against each other recently in the WSL when Chelsea won at Manchester United. Key early fixture, the start of the WSL season. Here's Morgan. Sell him out to Charles. Leticia. So the debut so far is Paris, who's caused Norway real problems in the second half in particular. Paris again. And a good run of minutes in this game as well, Nikita Paris. Actually a valued member of the squad for Serena Beekman. Yeah, she, she looks more confident as well. I think she's she got a new lease of life really particularly in this second half that positive direct when she's got it it's paris again to zellum two kelly ducks inside again so many manchester united players on this pitch at the moment thomas dotter and burrisa Toon, Russo, Paris, Zellum, Leticia. Kelly linking up with Russo. So, considering the relatively late development of the Manchester United women's team, they've built a decent squad. Yeah, I've read something where Borisa has been happy with the amount of minutes that she played at Manchester United. Just to see what happens, because she's a Really good central midfielder that shows the quality of players that they have united in the squad at the moment. Well, it's a narrow lead for England. So there's still something in here for Norway, but losing a player makes that task even harder. And I think Serena Wiegmann in a weird way, will be disappointed that Norway lost a player. Yeah, I think it's about experiences for her team managing games. This is another one against ten players. Blackstone trying to play that ball in towards Wright, who's quick. There's the cover from Daly, who's equally quick. Catching for that ball. Yeah, last ditch challenge from Daly. I think it's just the way that it's quite harsh the way. I a foot jarred against the, the floor, but Wrighton has gone on that left-hand side and just trying to get back in the game because whatever it's 1-0, there's a chance for Norway, even though they're down to 10. It's almost played two different matches, Rachel Daly. Your mind around playing as a forward and then having to defend on the cover. Black stance throw. 
Just 1 0 at the moment. That was blocked by Morgan. Zellum. She's played well beneath Charles on that left hand side, but that was a good example of where she was naturally left footed. She'd just take it and play a ball down the line and let Kelly be away. Harris into Russo, what a touch! On to Kelly. And Kelly will look to Ben, what took a little reflection. Behind for a corner. That's good from Russo. Oh, you can just the ball under your control when there's so many players around you as well as the ball comes in she's moving it's a great little touch and then she's the awareness to have a look and it's coming and get it right to that bottom corner not bad lovely stuff from Russo in goes the England corner daily attacking there in a way, Stanway! And that threatened to go a long way if it wasn't for the <laughs> top of that building. He's sure of the night, as <laughs> usual. <laughs> she sees the funny side of it, Stanway. That stunning goal she scored against Spain to give her a few more of those. And brilliant travelling support to this part of the world this time of year as well. as well Roebuck coming out of her goal an error at the back from England and Norway having had a player sent off have fought back in this game would you believe it it's a signal a signal for Roebuck she hasn't done much wrong in this game so far for England speculative ball forward and she had to make contact she actually made a good decision to come out but she had to follow through and connect with the ball first it's a great run by Marnham in the first place she was expecting Roebuck to get it just took her eye off the ball Sickner for the England goalkeeper who've done so well so far and Arsenal's Frieda Marnham coming off the bench with the equaliser for Norway who've been up against it at times tonight. But with England only leading by that one goal, there was enough in it for them. So England looking to respond with Kelly. Stanway. And that's lost. And maybe Norway might nick it here. Daly on the cover. Paris, great turn. Good pace from Paris, smash drive for stride by Engen though. That's good cover. You're right though, Seb. Well, ever it's 1-0, there's always can be a mistake, which that was, or something that someone does that's brilliant. Can bring Norway back into the to the game. And they'll be kicking themselves. Paris had such control over large portions of this game. So it'll be interesting last 10 minutes. England defending an unbeaten record under Serena Wigman. Wouldn't be something, wouldn't it be something if it was Norway to end that run? Maybe Risa in charge. But Kelly, putting that one in. Charles across. Letizia. Zillum. Played it towards Russo. Quite get it under control. Here's Zellum. Bit of power behind it, that shot. Yeah, a bit more urgency from England now. They were just comfortably trying to see the rest of the game out at 1 0. Now they're going to have to up the tempo and try and create a second from something. 
a Latoon. Played the whole game so far. Charles. Free kick to England. For Charles to cause some problems with a set piece. It's a good opportunity now for England just to get the ball in a good area. We've got players that can get on the end of good delivery. We're going to see another England debut tonight for Brighton's Katie Robinson. A 20 year old to come on and replace Nikita Paris. We saw Jess Park come on and score with just a second touch. What can Katie Robinson do here? An electric winger. That won't be the target of this free kick, you wouldn't have thought. Zellum over this set piece for England. 1 1, the closing stages, and it goes from Zellum. That's a tester for the goalkeeper. A good punch in the end, actually, for McCusson. She may have hurt herself in the process. Zellum. Two. The tempo, Ella Toon. Stanway helps it in. Russo peeling away. Here's Charles with a bit of room. Charles again. Zellum. A bit of urgency to England's play. And Zellum is too much on that, surely. Well left by the goalkeeper. Yeah, a couple of opportunities. I think the first one from Neve Charles to get the ball across. Well. It's just waiting to be headed in. I think the keeper just caught her own play. It's a great ball in. Goalkeeper brave to, to reach out and get the first contact on that. Well, in international friendlies, when lots of changes are being made and teams experimenting, you can get things happening in the game because Norway going a player down and then finding an equalizer against perhaps the best team in the world at the moment against a nation that beat you heavily last time you faced them yeah I think it everybody knows as a goalkeeper you make one mistake and it leads to a goal and Roebuck I don't know whether she just lost the flight of the ball and I'm still had a little bit to do to put it in the back of the net but made it a lot easier from the mistake from Roebuck. She's a strong personality, but I just think at this level, it just shows you you wonder look, you can't be comfortable even against 10 players. Well, an error at the back has cost England their clean sheet. And Ellie Roebuck only has one clean sheet in her. She does have. Other end, Carson. She's stretched this one off. To see it's a place boy looking for a permanent fixture in that position. It's a sick cap tonight. Only Carson. And we get a late goal in this game. To see it back to Roebuck. Good distance on that, Ellie Roebuck. Yeah, good girl, it's not about the mistakes, how she reacts to it. It's a good first touch after the mistake. Particularly as the crowd were doing pantomime noises. Some odd crowd noises tonight. Charles. A lot of the ball for England. Likewise, Kelly. Now Kelly sends another difficult one in for the keeper to deal with. Uh, the flag's gone up on the far side. Mitchell Daly in there. Yeah, the goalkeeper's actually dealt with two or three girls, and I'm not sure that was offside. It's a difficult one. The goalkeeper didn't know. Nicholson had to deal with it again. 
Still wants to get forward, Rachel Daly. Can England find a late winner? It's a determined Norway side. It's to pick up a good result against England to win their own year on a high. To a rather disappointing one. In from Kelly. Just couldn't keep it alive at the back post. To Robinson. And her first contribution to the game. That unbeaten record will be very important to her, but I suppose tonight Lucy's just about seeing those players who've come into the side. Yeah, and you expect a, the rhythm to change and not be as much cohesion when you do make those changes. But I think that she'll be disappointed with the quality of the chances that England have given up on Norway. So I have had some chances in probably a, in terms of how good a quality they are, probably more than the England's chances have been. Also pushing on here. Robinson, there's those quick feet. And that's not a bad ball towards Kelly. Free kick in the end, but the first glimpse of Katie Robinson and what she can do on the ball. Yeah, brilliant there from Robinson. Really confident first run with the ball. Chloe Kelly just caught on the back foot, just needed to anticipate that she was going to hang that one up. and Letizia, two players who know each other very well from youth level, youth level, early teens. They play together in the southwest of England. Both on the pitch for the senior side tonight. Special moment for both them and their families. And there to be four added minutes at the end of this game. Will we get a winner? Felt like England have had the extra player and made that advantage really count. Can they do in the last few minutes? Kelly swept in. Zellum, nice touch to Toon. Get away from Norman Hal. I suppose having that extra player has enabled Rachel Daly to just get forward again. Charles to two. England pushing for a late winner. He played in again. Dr. Robinson. Robinson once more. All sent in and again, goalkeepers look confident in the second half. Yeah, they've been putting England have been putting Mickelson under pressure with the Five or six crosses, usually from the left-hand side, inwards. She's dealt with all of them. England just can't get a player to run across or get the first contact on the ball. More into that added, added time. Stanway. Out to Kelly. Shot was blocked again. Diligent play from Norway. Working hard. And the draw here. Charles. Stanway across. Up to Valetissia and Zellum. It will be a free kick. You're right and can't believe it. Yeah, actually defending the edge of the box quite well. Norway, but this is an opportunity for England. Recycle the ball across the area and then just caught Zellum. Zellum. They will be expecting her to get up to take this. She may just leave this for Stanway, I think. Yeah, 
Norway have everybody back to defend this free kick late on. What can Stanway deliver? Goes to the back post towards Russo. Run out for a corner, not quite. Two. That's a good ball. Russo pulls it across. Not that far away to being poked home. Still England put the pressure on Charles. Robinson keeping that alive. Stanway as well. Played in again. Punch on that, but drops to Charles. Toon, heavy pressure here from England, and then Russo puts it wide. Oh, Russo knew that she, where she needed to direct the ball. It's the best effort coming across here. Well defended again by Norway. Desperation. We well, have to give credit to Norway. Go! This display has gone some way to trying to repair the damage done by that heavy defeat at the Euros, especially with key players missing as well, and losing a player to a red card in the second half. Still a minute to see out. Go! Kelly. It's away from Torres Dotted. Robinson, good touch. Stanway can't get it back, cleared away. I don't think the draw as such will bother Serena Vigman. It's all about displays in friendlies. But then it goes from Kelly, they might put it late here, not that far away. But that's the full time whistle. A year that will live long in the memory comes to a close with a draw against Norway. England looked on course for a victory when Rachel Daly put them ahead in the first half and they had a player advantage when Stonsevold was sent off in the second half. But Norway fought back and after an error from Eli Roebuck, Frieda Marnen put the ball in the net. It has ended here in Spain. With the spoils shared in the end. 2023 could be even bigger, but the European champions have already achieved something measurable, immeasurable this year. A final score in the final match of 2023.